6 Minutes starts now. How will they get out? I'm Dave Anthony, Fox News. That's the big question in Thailand the day after a dozen boys and their sucking soccer coach missing in a, in a cave for more than a week were found alive. How many of you? 13. Brilliant. That's one of the British divers who finally reached the boys. Fox's Simon Owen monitoring it all live from London. Dave, the governor of Thailand's Chiang Rai province, calling the discovery of the team a spectacular success. They're all said to be in a stable condition and families have been celebrating. Today is the best day. I've been waiting for my son for so many days. The first thing I'll do is hug him. But a complex rescue lies ahead. Having been trapped by heavy rains, the Thai interior minister says the boys may need to learn to dive before they can leave or they could be kept in place until the rainy season ends. But that's likely to be months. Dave? Simon, President Trump's been up and tweeting a lot, criticizing Democrats, talking up the economy, defending ICE, and writing the situation with North Korea is going well. No rocket launches or nuclear testing in eight months. But Secretary of State Pompeo will go later this week for more talks amid reports North Korea is secretly still doing nuclear weapons work. The president has two or three more interviews to go before deciding who to nominate for the Supreme Court. He tweeted he met with four very impressive people yesterday. His press secretary, Sarah Sanders, just told Fox. Tremendous intellect, someone who will stick to upholding the Constitution, and somebody who has great judicial temperament. Those are the big things the president is looking for in a candidate. The Senate's Democratic leader opposes all the possible justice. This is on the president's short list, fearing abortions legalization could be in jeopardy. Chuck Schumer is urging people to tell their senators not to support the nominee. If you're one of those who needs coffee to get going in the morning, sip on this. A new study of a half million British coffee drinkers found they were 10 to 15 percent less likely to die over their 10 year period compared to those who don't drink coffee. Fox News, fair and balanced. As a small business owner, you make every dollar count. So what could you do with $10? Go to Vistaprint.com today and you'll get 500 high quality custom business cards for only $9.99. That's less than two cents per card. And at Vistaprint, your satisfaction is absolutely guaranteed. So it's never been easier to turn 500 strangers into connections. Just visit Vistaprint.com and use promo code 3030 at checkout. That's Vistaprint.com, promo code 3030. Make your home an ADT home and help protect against break-ins, fire, and carbon monoxide. Get our lowest rate for fast response monitoring, starting at just $28.99 a month. That's about a dollar a day from the most trusted name in home security. Get ADT's tested, trusted, and proven security and service now at a great value. Don't wait. Call today. ADT. Always there. Now everywhere. Requires 36-month monitoring contract. Early termination, taxes, and itself fees apply. Certain markets excluded. See terms and pricing at ADT.com. Anticipated tax collections from adult-use marijuana sales were removed from Governor Murphy's first budget because lawmakers haven't made it legal. Senate President Steve Sweeney says key senators Nick Scutari and Joe Vitale are talking about the issue. He does predict votes in the months ahead. I'm thinking late July, August, hopefully, now that this budget's out of the way, now that a lot of this stuff's out of the way or the noise is out of the way, Hopefully the administration and and we all can focus on marijuana. Recreational use could start relatively quickly at existing medical dispensaries. A power outage brought rides at a Jersey Beach amusement park to a halt last night, leaving some passengers stranded. The outage happened at Castaway Cove in Ocean City about 8.30 last night. Power restored after about 20 minutes, but riders were given refunds and sent home. A New Jersey fisherman hooked a great white shark off the Jersey shore. Chris O'Neill of Little Egg Harbor was trolling east of Great Egg Inlet when something took the bait 40 feet below the surface. Fifteen minutes and a mighty struggle later, he had a six-foot great white above the water. He let it go. I'm Eric Scott. This is the Town Square News Network. We're burning off some patchy fog on this humid morning across New Jersey. It'll be a partly sunny day with highs mostly in the lower 90s, 80s at the beaches. Scattered showers and thunderstorms may pop up this afternoon into this evening. Tomorrow, the 4th of July, looking pretty good, partly to mostly cloudy, just a chance for a stray shower. Highs tomorrow, upper 80s to around 90. Franklin Mutual Insurance makes choosing home insurance easy. FMI delivers the most appropriate coverage for the way you live. Simple. Find an agent near you at fmiweb.com. Franklin Mutual Insurance for the way you live. I'm meteorologist Dan Zero. From Harry Hurley Way in the world's playground 
to the broadcast pioneers of Philadelphia Hall of Fame. I want to congratulate my friend, Harry Hurley. You're about to find out why Harry Hurley has been named to the Talkers Magazine list of the 100 most important talk show hosts in the nation. Live from the studios of Town Square Media in Northfield, it's Hurley in the Morning on WPG Talk Radio 104.1. Chuck Malamud looking good in the studio today, ladies and gentlemen. This is Chuck Malamud's weekly program all about your financial matters. We're in our 27th year together uh, on Tuesday mornings in the 8 o'clock hour. Chuck is the managing director, leads his team, the Malamud Group, at Morgan Stanley's Northfield, New Jersey office. We will be by the main office later today to make a deposit. The following program is presented, sponsored by Chuck Malamud a financial advisor at Morgan Stanley. The information, views, and opinions expressed on this broadcast are those of Chuck Malamut and do not necessarily reflect those of Morgan Stanley or its affiliates. They are current as of the date of this broadcast and are subject to change without notice. Neither the information provided nor any opinion expressed herein constitutes a solicitation for the purchase or sale of any security. This presentation is for informational purposes only. Morgan Stanley, Smith Barney, member SIPC. Chuck will be with us until 845 this morning at 850 for the final 10 minutes. We will be joined this morning by Jamie Gialoretto, Miss New Jersey 2019, and a good friend Carl is here right now from uh, Chick-fil-A. Carl, you're on Fire Road, right? Yes, Fire Road. Yeah, the Fire Road Chick-fil-A kids. Uh, love Carl. Lo- love, love his product. And uh, Carl's a good friend, so he is monitoring the program as well. Chuck, we have a lot to cover this hour. Uh, opening comments. Uh, before we get started, Kirk, thank you very much for the uh, the glasses. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Kirk has loaned Chuck his glasses, which Chuck will put in my safekeeping, and I will then get them back to Kirk in the not-too-distant future. <laughs> Foster Grants. Well, I, I guess I was moving things from one bag to another, and somehow the Chuck, glasses. Chuck, you look a little like Ben Franklin. The glass, this morning nah, we're we're all, we're all Kirk, good. But, you, know, you know, before we get into our our segment, I I, I don't know if I can comment or this or should comment or cannot comment, but I'm going to comment anyway if that makes any sense. Makes sense. You know, you spent a fair amount of time uh, talking about you know the most recent uh, changes to to New Jersey. T- uh, State income taxes, yeah. state ta- or taxes, and and you know, bottom line, and I think we're all a believer, and in, in including Bob the caller before that. Um, one, if we operated our households or our budgets the way the state does or the feds, you, one, you'd be out of business. Uh, secondly, um, you know, I, I mean, I, I don't think any of us are terribly impressed with, with the services that we receive uh, overall from the state of New Jersey. Correct. You know, whether it's a particular agency you're dealing with or the government or, you know, whatever it may be. So if – and I think a lot of people – I hope I don't get four flat tires when I walk out of here today when I make this statement. But I would – I guess our opinion, and I'll speak maybe for myself, is that we're terribly overstaffed. And, 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 and the product that's delivered is, I guess, at best average, maybe even inferior – so what would be so difficult or challenging to say, hey, look, we're going to slice 10 percent. We're going to slice 20 percent. We're going to slice 30 percent of, you know, of, of, of the employees, um, of the, you know, of what happens within the state. They did it to the police and fire in Atlantic City. So wh- why can't, you know, More than you, that. you sort of spend within your means. And, it's, and I, I, I think, you know, because they have this incredible appetite. And I, I do like the comment, you know, from the government, we're investing. Yes. It's, it's, it's rather, I guess, at best, I, I, I view that as very, as very comical. And, and, and I, I guess, bottom line, at the end of the day, we have nobody to blame but ourselves because we, you know, we, the, the voters of the state of New Jersey, sh- showed up uh, last November and elected, it, you know, elected the governor. And... And he was who incidentally <laughs> promised up from the very beginning. What he was, he was do. yeah. So he you can't fault him for delivering on what he promised he was going to deliver. He he was in one of two states where you could commit political suicide, and yet not commit political suicide. Actually, you would win. You could do this in California, and you could do it in New Jersey. I'm not aware of another state where you could actually advertise that you're going to massively raise taxes 
and then you would have a tremendous mandate win. And he yeah. did. So I, I guess the bottom line is <clears throat> when you take a, when you kind of take a look at this, uh, you know, or you know, and I think Kirk, you said it, you said it correctly that uh, the tax revolters have already revolted and left, and you know, the tax. I think I think what I read seventeen hundred households or families or individuals will you know earn over five million in the state of New Jersey. So there's going to be a new round of revolters. It's not over. The, the The migration is not over. I suspect it has not even yet begun. I don't disagree. And, I mean, you know, the, the bottom line is, is you think about, one, that the taxes on, quote, the rich, the really rich, you know, earning $5 million plus, that's going to hurt. And then on top of that, you know, this tax for bit on the businesses. It's so... And I don't know who said it in the last hour, but it was absolutely correct. Must have been me then. <laughs> I think it was actually Bob oh, or Kirk. Maybe. Oh, it's he ruled me out. <laughs> he doesn't know who said it, but he ruled me out. Go ahead. So, but I, but I, <laughs> but I think what's going to happen. I mean, why would you come here with a startup? Why would you come? With, you know, bring. Why would you locate relocate your business? Oh, Kirk said it. Okay. No, I said that. All right. So Go ahead. anyway. One of the three of you very bright yes. people made that statement. How's that sound? Sounds good. Why would you relocate your business to New Jersey? Uh, I'm not certain why. Well, you know, you wouldn't. And even if you're already here, you're looking to to move it somewhere else as it stands now. Yeah, I mean, I think all of us have have ties. You know, locally. To, to the area, uh, professionally, personally. Um, and that's where our elected officials that are doing these regressive things, that's where they're very fortunate. And, and chances are you're, you're less likely to leave and unless you really spend the effort to go ahead and, and make that move. But um, I, I think in retrospect, I mean, there, there were some things in the, in the tax bill that could have really gone, the, you know, I think actually worse, where – you know, they, they increased – it was originally, quote, I'm going to tax the millionaires. Right. Well, if you – you know, it, it's kind of – if you make a million dollars, are you real, are you a millionaire? I mean – Not after taxes, you're not. No, but exactly. I mean, to, to me, definition – You're lucky to be a half a millionaire. You know, the definition of uh, is, is your net worth, not necessarily your – You know, your, your, your annual gross income. So, and again, it's a, I think it's a, a play on words. And if, if anything, at the end of the day, um, yeah, I, I think it's a really sad day for New Jersey at the end of the, you know, when you look at it. And as you say, it could have even been worse, but they had disagreement whether to just absolutely crush the business side or absolutely crush the individual. And we sort of got um, – it wasn't mild. It wasn't light at all, but we got a reduced version in the end. That still has 1.4 billion in new taxes. Yeah, and unfortunately, to go back to what we originally talked about, like why, if Town Square Media was having an issue or the Shore Agency was having an issue with with their revenue, uh, one of the first places they look is their variable costs, which happens to be payroll. You, you know, you have fixed costs that you can't change, or more. You know, your the mortgages that you are responsible for, your business loans, whatever it may be. But, but at the end of the day. You know, you go to those variable expenses. I mean, you remember the days where we did it. We you know, did it. Way, way way back when. Uh, and and I'm people do it now. It's the the first thing they look at is reduction of variable expenses. And I just don't, I don't see any buy in from from the state of New Jersey on this one. There's not, except in the instances where they didn't mind dropping the hammer, like Atlantic City. They crushed them. They crush the police and department. I, I don't know if that's they more. Of, the fire I don't know if that's more of a, of a political move uh, versus a, a need to actually reduce. Because what happens is, in, this, in the, if you hear it, I mean, look, Atlantic City, wonderful weekend. I mean, I had the opportunity. I met some friends over. I didn't get into town, but we were, you know, over at Borgata. Um, Friday night, the place was just packed. Valet was closed. You're on the top level of Self Park. I mean, it's all good stuff. I mean, yep. the, the traffic into town, I guess, for Carrie Underwood was 
f- fun, you know, it's just all backed up to, you know, to basically where you make that yep. either the left to go to, you know, Brigantine area or you go straight into town. It was just, it was car to, it, you know, it was, it was, it was a wonderful thing to see. Well, we had over a million people in four days and, and we, I, we stayed overnight on Saturday and Kirk and Nancy obviously live in Atlantic City. We were together on Saturday night. You had a heck of a time just getting from where you were down to us, didn't you, Kirk? Battle. It was a battle. Yeah, so somehow it, I missed that. I, I missed that invite. I don't. That's know not true. That, we did tell Chuck about it <laughs> last week. We did tell Chuck about it. Anyway, what I was trying to say yeah. was that I'm, I'm not quite sure. I mean, the state takes all the credit. Chuck, the shrimp were that big. I'm sure they were. They had like a zip code. Were they jumbo? They, they, they the they, jumbo shrimp. They were like almost like Sinatra shrimp. Yeah, well, in they any had case, le- leashes what, and we walked them. We're, we're, let me let me let me finish before treadmills. We can and then we get to the market update. But okay. I, I guess the point I was trying to make is the state takes all the credit for the um, the rebirth of Atlantic City, and I, I'm not quite certain that they can actually. Really should take credit for that. I think it was. I think it was a lot of hardworking people, and those that stepped up in really, really difficult times and said, "Look, we're going to make an investment here in this town." So I think that's really, that's really what resurrected. You know, is resurrecting Atlantic City. So the, what happens is now, you know, we, and the economy is improving. Yeah, we roll right into the summer, uh, and what's going to happen, really, you know, come middle of September, is going to be the answer. And, and, you know, I think everyone has kind of come to the conclusion that we probably have too much, still too much, we'll have too much gaming, and something is going to have to go. Um, and and, and I, we, we think it's an entity on the boardwalk. In the middle of the boardwalk, we won't go in, in, into any names, but I think it doesn't if, take I much think to if, figure Chuck, out. if the net was too opened and are viable and they're not cannibalizing – the current market and they're actually adding to it and i believe you can make the case hard rock through their database is bringing people in and not just cannibalizing i don't have as much of a feel for ocean resorts and i do believe the one that you're mentioning will ultimately close but if we get too open and net one close that's still growing the jurisdiction I, and i think yeah, that i would- believe our gaming analyst uh, came out you know literally on, on the the day that uh, Ocean and Hard Rock opened and said he, he was estimating or his group was estimating a 20% cannibalization, you know, within the city. So you think about that, you know, across the board, how that's going to impact these these uh, various enti- entities and organizations. But I don't think you're really going to feel that until you get into the, sh- into the shoulder season. Do you believe th- – I think that's a very good point. Do you believe, though – the market's actually going to grow, though the size. Well, of the I mean, I, I mean, that is the the hope and the expectation. Yeah. I mean, you, you would expect that in July, you know, compared July to or June to June of last year, July to July, yes. I mean, yeah. I mean, you're going to have so much uh, you're, more inventory. You're going to you're going to grow, uh, and the question is, you know, once you get to that shoulder seasons, in the middle of the winter, you know, are you re- are you still growing your revenue? But, you know, it, look, it's all – these are good things we're talking about. Uh, there, there's no doubt about it. And I mean, people invested because they saw how the market was going. They, they believe that there, there was uh, – Atlantic, you know, Atlantic City has done this multiple times. We did it when we were all kids. Uh, you know, has, has, you know, gone through these, you know, rebirths, rebirths where – and I, we, can, we could spend the next hour and just chat about what happened. We were all kind of growing up. And our children will be able to talk about what happened, you know, while they were growing up. And we're starting to see some real estate, you know, clear. You know, you're starting to see those short sales sort of go go by the way, you know, not go by the wayside, but you know, are being reduced. And uh, people are coming back into into the area, which is great. And so for you know, homeowners that have been around that might be looking to sell their property might not be such a bad time to consider it. Let's get our break in. When we come back, Chuck will share his market update. Excellent um, opening monologue by Chuck Malamut, the official exclusive financial consultant for the Hurley in the Morning program. This portion of Hurley in the Morning is also brought to us by Alan Angeloni, Angeloni's 2 Restaurant and Lounge for nearly 40 years in the Ducktown section of Atlantic City. At the corner of Arctic and Georgia Avenues, Angeloni's 2 Restaurant and Lounge Features the finest Italian-American cuisine in Atlantic City, preparing all meals to order. Also check out Allen's incredible wine list. Many say, even casino folks have told me, finest wine selection in the city. 
Lunches serve Monday through Friday. Dinner seven nights a week. Mama Angeloni's reign supreme on Sundays, not this Sunday, of course, during 4th of July, but uh, beginning at 4 p.m. for several hours because after July 4th, the hours are not until 11 p.m. But what a wonderful opportunity to select every Sunday, non-holiday Sunday, a wide variety of fabulous four-course, $25 dinner selections for groups of 10 or less. I remind you that Mama Angeloni's, Alan takes credit cards for all your other purchases, but Mama Angeloni's is on a cash-only basis. The merchant fees, the reward programs, et cetera, are very expensive. Today, business happens here, here, and virtually anywhere. Because today, innovative companies are reinventing the way business happens. And they need people who can keep up. With the expertise and technology to get packages to over 150 million delivery points. So, who can help you deliver the future of commerce? The United States Postal Service. See why we deliver more e-commerce packages to homes than anyone at usps.com slash future. Make your home an ADT home and help protect against break-ins, fire, and carbon monoxide. Get our lowest rate for fast response monitoring, starting at just $28.99 a month. That's about a dollar a day from the most trusted name in home security. Get ADT's tested, trusted, and proven security and service now at a great value. Don't wait. Call today. ADT. Always there. Now everywhere. Requires 36-month monitoring contract. Early termination, taxes, and itself fees apply. Certain markets excluded. See terms and pricing at ADT.com. Hi, it's Brian Kilmeade. Join me next at 10, then Sean Hannity at 3. Now back to Harry Hurley on WPG Talk Radio 104.1, South Jersey's talk station. Hey, thanks very much. 21 minutes past the hour. Chuck Malamon is here, the official, the exclusive financial advisor for the Hurley in the Morning program. Oh, look at this. Kirk is a man with multiple, multiple glasses. This is getting great. Chuck doesn't have to ever bring glasses again. Kirk's got 10 pairs falling out of his pockets. Uh, Chuck, your market update when you're ready. So, so Harry, as, as we know, all eyes now should be focused on earnings that will be coming in the next couple of weeks. But, but unfortunately, what, it, what is happening is that because there's really nothing to focus on and all of the, um, all the companies that are scheduled to report are in that quiet period where they can't report anything. So <clears throat> we are focused on it's all you know geopolitical issues at this point in time. So last week, uh, m- most of the indices were down. Um, you know, t- technology was the biggest loser. Energy stocks did outperform as oil prices you know rallied um, on the prospects of, of this reduced supply that we've been seeing. Government bonds actually moved down, and there's been a lot of discussion. You remember, remember, it wasn't too long ago where you know the the, the ten year was going to go through three percent. It was going to be end of the end of the uh, domestic and global economy. We would go into a recession. The yield curve uh, was would continue to flatten. It would then invert. But right now, what is happening? Um, there is still somewhat of a the spread has tightened so much between a two year and a ten year. But the ten year right now is about a two point eight five. Um, you know what we're what we're seeing overseas in the Chinese market, in particular, that they are in now in a, a quote unquote a bear market. Um, I th- I'm thinking some of that has to do with maybe everything that's happening with you know with within all the discussions. But when you look at the you know year to date, um, small caps, domestic small caps are the best performer, up almost eight percent. U.S. large caps, because there are a lot of multinational companies that trade overseas, they were up a little bit less than 2%. And at the same time, in spite of it all, we've talked about rising prices of commodities. Mm-hmm. The price of Brent was actually up almost 20% year to date. I don't think any of us would have really made that prediction you know, a year ago. No, not we- at all. In fact, we were looking the other way, that we were producing more than ever, and that it looked like it would be, be just the opposite, which goes to show you, you never know many times the least expected result can happen. Chuck, are the markets um, upset, uh, depressed in any way over the trade wars? I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't know if they're uh, they're upset. I think they just, they're, they're anxious, you know, because you, know, you look at the, you know, you look at the potential ramifications of, of what's going to happen. It's, you know, the U.S. is going to do certain things, and as a result, 
you know, whether it's Canada, whether it's China, they're going to quote unquote, they're going to retaliate. But, but at the end of the day, they, who gets hurt by all this? It's, you know, literally, you know, I think all of us, all the consumers, because we're going to pay more. I mean, if, you know, what is the cost going to be to buy a, a car that's imported, you know, from Germany? Uh, what is the cost going to be to export a General Motors car or Ford, an American, American-made vehicle, you know, to China. And then Canada said, hey, you, the, your tariffs, we're giving them right back to you, and we're adding them to this, 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 and this. So they they struck back. Yeah, so I, I think, you know, July 6th is is the big day, you know, and, and, you know, we have seen President Trump operate, you know, right, wrong, or different here, in, you know, locally. And we kind of understand how the way he operates. And is he, is he, you know, is he now, you know, quote unquote, being a being a big bully and trying to push, you know, you know, these countries and these officials from these various countries around to say to get what he or, you know, what we believe is fair. Yeah, but, I think yes to that. Uh, and, the, and the deals have been unfair. NAFTA stinks. A lot of these deals have been very unfair to America. He's willing to have a short term trade war, I believe in order to long-term fix what are structurally bad deals for America. I know short-term, that gives people stomach pain, but I'm okay with that. If you ultimately fix something going forward, I don't think there's any pro- – I think it's defendable to say that there might be a short-term hiccup here and there. Kirk, do you agree? Yes. I think that's um, something that uh, that I'm willing to see happen, and we'll see – Strategy, exactly. The president also is very good at saying, for example, China wants to do a deal, so we won't do anything right now, and then he'll move move the bar a bit. Yeah, so if, if you take a look, for instance, you know, w- what we've accomplished now in, in spite of everything, I mean, as I mentioned to you, you know, been sort of the, this, the great slog, and we you know we've had, it is the fantastic 2017, and yes. you know, one of the things our strategists came out with said, don't, in the last, beginning of last this year don't expect the same and i think investors did expect the same and the fact now that we've had a fair amount of volatility is evidenced most recently in the, in uh, the action that we had on i believe it was friday the action you take yesterday for instance i mean the the dow and again we don't like to use that but everybody talks about the dow was down at one point in time 190 points uh, at the end of the day, we were positive, you know, ac- across, you know, all three indices. Woke up this morning, uh, the Dow, the S&P, and the NASDAQ are all, you know, positive. So as we get into the into the holiday, today is a shortened day. You know, the stock market closes at 1 o'clock. So, you know, we walk into the holiday, the holiday which is very strange to be on a Wednesday. But, yeah. you know, I, I think that, that bodes well because if you look – and you the know, markets will open up Thursday. Markets open regular, yeah. yeah, Thursday, Friday. So it's just Wednesday. Wednesday we're off. Um, you know, if we look at like what's what do we think is going to happen? You know, the, for the rest of the year, um, we think there's going to be continued volatility. <clears throat> you remember we had a ten percent plus correction in the first quarter, and we re- recovered all of that. We think don't be at all surprised if you have. Uh, some corrections, not only maybe more inter- more dem- more internationally than we have or globally than we have here domestically, uh, the trade tensions, the uncertainty for you know with respect to the economy, earnings growth. I mean, th- th- those are all good, but they they're all going to ultimately weigh potentially in what's going to happen to stocks. Fed, pretty certain that uh, you know we we went through that June rate hike. You know now they're talking probably two more before the end of the year. Hopefully the Fed is paying attention, and they're not just on their own path because they have inflation in check that yeah. Kirk mentioned at the last hour. But you know the bottom line is you know you, you get stretched and you say, well maybe the economy can handle you know these multiple rate increases. Chuck, what are the difference? <clears throat> and we have about a minute before the break, and we can finish after the break, or even go past the break a minute or so if you need need a couple minutes to talk about this. What are the differences in the fundamentals of the economy that we can now raise interest rates? versus eight years where we could not raise interest rates and had to print money, quantitative easing, rounds one, two, and so on. What are the differences? Well, I think I, th- I think that what you just spoke about in the last hour is the fact that there's more there's more jobs than people. Yeah. And and, and the concern that, that all of us have, and that's, all, that's great news, but the concern is, you know, wage growth. Is that going to really push, 
you know, the needle in the direction of in increased wages, which is great for the consumer, but ultimately could have an impact on inflation. So I think that if so, if inflation remains in check um, and the yield curve remains, you know, where it is today, maybe somewhat flattish and does not invert. You know, I, I think, you know, the economic growth that we have all uh, been happy recipients of can hopefully should be able to continue. Solid answer from the best in his business, Chuck Malamut, the official, the exclusive financial advisor for the Hurley in the Morning program. You can make Chuck yours by simply proclaiming it. Give him a call, 609-383-2010. Chuck will introduce to you his concept of total asset management coupled with the all-important asset allocation, 609 609- 383-2010, the number to reach the Malamut Group. When you need to know, make the switch to WPG Talk Radio 104.1 and WPGTalkRadio.com. Only one South Jersey radio station brings you breaking news online, on Facebook and Twitter, 24-7. Fox News Alerts. This is a Fox News Alert. South Jersey traffic updates. Looking good on the White Horse and Black Horse bikes. And more. Set the first button on your car radio for WPG Talk Radio 104.1, South Jersey's talk station. Are you drowning in IRS tax debt? I owe the IRS $37,000. Get ready for a toll-free hotline. Take advantage of new IRS tax forgiveness programs that may protect you from IRS collection agencies. They have the power to garnish your wages, put liens on your property, and levy your bank account. Civic Tax Relief can help protect you from the IRS. Civic Tax Relief basically represented me against the IRS, and by the time everything was completed, I didn't owe the IRS anything. Find out about the Fresh Start program that is now available through Civic Tax Relief. Civic Tax Relief's special tax hotline can help you discover all the relief programs available for free. I would recommend anyone who has a tax problem to contact Civic Tax Relief. Just call 800-315-9956. 800-315-9956. Don't wait. Call now. 800-315-9956. 800-315-9956. Has your current sales job got you caught in a rut? Are you not making the money you know you're worth? It's time to tune in to a new career. WPG Talk Radio 104.1 is adding full-time advertising executives to sell our full range of products. We're more than a radio company. We're the online advertising experts in South Jersey. Don't miss out on one of the fastest growing careers. Call Mike Rubel, market president, at 609-645-9797 to schedule your interview. Town Square Media is an equal opportunity employer. Hey, wake up with Harry Hurley and drive home with me, Sean Hannity, 3 to 6. It's all happening here on WPG Talk Radio 104.1. We're back 30, approaching 33 minutes past the hour. Chuck Malamut is here, the official financial advisor for the Hurley in the Morning program. Are we talking further about the mid-year assessment? No, I think we're good with that, okay. Harry. Uh, let's... Um Let's take a minute and look at uh, the June employment report. Good. Uh, it's got to be good. The, you know, we think the consensus estimate is just shy of 200,000, 198,000. That's down from the May better than expected 223,000, but still above the average rate, you know, that we've that we've had over the last 12 months as we got into the end of end of May. So, again, the hour, the average hourly earnings, which is really the big number, uh, we hit that 2.7% annual growth rate last month and probably will move a little bit higher as we as we get, got through the month of um, the month of June. So are you basing your GDP on the um, Atlanta Fed or what are you what are you because there's different. No, no, I, I, I was I was talking about the average, just the average wage growth. Uh, wage growth, okay. We'll get to, so, we're going to get to GDP a little bit later because uh, I know that um, that's been revised lower, which is sort of cruel. But I don't want to get ahead of um, ourselves because we still want to talk about the other activity, record M and A activity, and so on and so forth. But June employment, you feel is less than expected or well no no, no. it's probably it's going to be we think it's going to be less than the uh less than may. number that was posted in may which makes sense which was may a higher is... number than anyone had really anticipated so we're thinking around that around that 200,000 mark uh which would not be unreasonable and may also has your summer startup stuff you have your and, seasonal work yeah, as well and, so and all that stuff 
Good. All right, you want to move on here, yes. Harry? Uh, so, yeah, merger, merger uh, and acquisition, M&A activity. So, uh, to date, global mergers and acquisitions actually were up 64% in the first half uh, of 2018. And to deals a, are getting done, aren't they? Yes, That's to, what I sense. to a record $2.5 trillion, uh, which I don't think anyone had really expected you know, to happen uh, in the beginning of the year. Let so, me get, Let me get, ask you this, and this is not a political statement. Do these companies look at this as opportunity that deals that couldn't get done for the prior eight years, big deals can now get done, they're not going to get stopped? I, I know there are certain deals that even the president has come out against, but for the most part, it seems like, Big deals can get done right now. It's, and, it's, and certainly if you look at, at what happened most recently with, with uh, AT&T and Time Warner as, as a perfect yeah. example. I mean, you know, and, and then there was a just a flurry of activity in, in that uh, in those particular sectors. Um, you know, it, it is easier to get, you know, easier to get things done unless, you know, you get picked on. Exactly. And, and we've seen, Fair enough. we've seen, um, you know, we've seen some some companies that get picked on for any of a number of reasons. But so, you know, the thing that we have to worry about about the surge that we had in, in mergers and acquisitions is it typically tends to be a late cycle phenomenon within the market. So, you know, it's, while it's all good news, I think investors oftentimes are a little skeptical with it. Um, when you say, I mean, I want to drill down on that, unpack that. When it happens late in the cycle, in other words, it happens towards the end of, yes, a, of a good of a, run. Yes, potentially of a, of, a, of a good run. So because everybody's you know rushing to market to get the deals done because of the fear that maybe things aren't going to be so wonderful in six months you know, or a year from now. So and the other thing we have to take a look at is that U.S. corporate debt you know, hit a record $6.3 trillion. So, you know, there's a, there's a lot of cash still on these balance sheets to end up servicing the debt most you know and i think we got to worry about is the fact that you know are we sort of getting a little bit over our skis so to speak you know with respect to um with respect to the the economy and chuck i'm very excited about this next topic not that that you have it that the gdp is going to be revised lower i of course i want it to be higher but even revising it lower it's still over three percent i believe but this brings me great joy because I said over the past decade, this nonsense of new norm and we can't grow at 3% anymore. You know, I never believed that. I never No, I know. I can't. I, look, I, there's a few things, a lot of things I forget, but the few things I remember, and I do remember that day I made that statement, I thought you and Kirk were going to like hang me from the ceiling. But Now, we love but, you, but, but I, I just thought that was this whole – just trapped. It was the phenomenon. So, so right. think about it. So, first quarter U.S. GDP was revised lower last week uh, to two percent from two point two. Now, second quarter growth is expected to be a lot stronger, with some estimates above four percent, partially due to a narrow narrow trade deficit. So, we think that in all, all in all, like you know, if you get that plus three, three and a half. I mean. That's exceptional. I was going to say, if we're anywhere three, three and a half, four, I know the Atlanta Fed seems to get exuberant. They had 5.4 at 1%, uh, 5.4% at one point for the second quarter. I I never believed that. Mm -hmm. But uh, if we're anywhere in the three to four range, it's tremendous. Yeah. Um, I think the next topic we know we, we, that I sent over to you last night, we, uh, you and Kirk really talked about in, in, inflation. In inflation. So I think we can probably okay. – we can probably uh, we can probably it. move on because sort of re- sort of repetitive. But here's what is very very interesting as we get you know you know to the end of into the second half of this year and and obviously you know the, the fourth quarter. Um, it's just remarkable with what people don't really spend a lot of time paying attention to is what happens during particular seasonality times within within the markets in this case you know if you take a look at what is what's we think or what i'm gonna let me rephrase that if we take a look at what is what has happened traditionally in the past harry if you are able to stay invested um you know throughout the entire year and not try to 
to time the market, you know, you should be you should be rewarded. So, you know, when you look at at a, at a calendar year, um, you know, the, the S and P more times than not has closed at its calendar year end year high in the second half of the year, and that's during the months of obviously July through December. And that's happened 74% of the time. And this has been measured, you know, for many years, back since 1950. In 15 of the last 25 years, the, the index's calendar year high occurred during the month of December. So, you know, not that we're trying to, you know, uh, time the market, but I think, it's again, it's the old adage, staying in the market because you never know for sure. But, you know, um, that's measuring what's happened typically in the S and P 500. So, we think as we get to the second half of this year that and again that Harry, remember that low single digit or low uh, or high single digit low double digit number. Yes. And and the Nasdaq is certainly well on its way to you know to, to achieving that. And then some. We think that the major indices, you know, could very well get that accomplished as well. All right. The home stretch. Uh, stay invested. You can. I learned this from you a long time ago. Time in the market, not trying to time the market. Time spent in the market. Now, the next topic that you know we want to talk about here, because we're running, I think we're running a little short on time. We have about six minutes. Um, is what is happening with Social Security? Okay. Uh, and it seems like every time we're together, we always we, we always spend a minute or two about Social Security. For, for the last 35 years, the, the total income of our nation's Social Security program, you know, that's obviously payroll taxes plus any interest income, has exceeded the total cost of the program. You know, benefits paid out plus administrative expenses. A, a streak that's projected, Harry, I use the word projected and, you know, quote unquote, to end in 2018. So there is a very, very high probability as we get into next year that, you know, remember as we grew up as kids, we always heard, oh, Social Security is not going to be around for you when it's time for you to retire. Oh, yeah. And, I always felt why, that way. Why are you paying this? It's crazy. And But but the bottom line is that if the information that we gleaned from the Social Security trustees report um, chances are that things might look a little bit different, you know, in the next several years than what we've been accustomed to over the last um, the last thirty five years. So I just wanted to kind of pass that on to you. Um, the only reason and I, your listeners, when I was younger, I thought this is a real this is a real scam. They won't let us opt out. We could invest this money. We have to stay in this, and th- they don't have it dedicated anymore. It goes into the general fund. They're, they're, they're stealing from it. They're putting in IOUs. Right. There's going to be more of us than there are, you know, because the baby boomers are coming of age. So I always in my younger years looked at it like this was a fool's errand and it was never going to be there. But then I learned about politics and these elected officials, the most important thing to them is winning the next election. It's like Absolutely. breathing it, air. It's, 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 so they'll never – they'll always find a way – to not screw the Social Security recipient, even if it requires more colossal borrowing to the point where we're almost insolvent. I don't know what number you agree, Chuck, but I've always been told $25 trillion or thereabouts, take give or take a trillion among friends, and literally we're insolvent. You know, you know Harry, on that, on that, on that same uh, thought process with respect to Social Security, And this is another, and I don't want to sound like Debbie Downer in here. I'm just trying to, you know, communicate with you and your listeners as to what's what's happening out there. Um, As as we were going through and we spent a little bit of time on this trustees report, what we found out, Harry, is that there there are as many Americans with outstanding student loans. There's 45 million Americans with outstanding student loans as there are retired American workers, another 45 million who are receiving Social Security retirement benefits. So think about think about that equation for a second. You know, 45 million that owe, 45 million that are collecting, I mean, it's, you know, push that out. This means you and I can't take a day off work is what it means. Uh, you Literally, gotta, we're one to one. 
<laughs> yeah. what, did it, what did it used to be? It wasn't like 12 to it 1? Was, it was, it was crazy. It numbers. was like, I don't remember the number, but I mean, it's just now when I saw that, it's like there are certain things that really grab your attention. And I think that is that is one of the. You know, one of the items that really is of concern for, it, you, all, for all of us. And I, I, I want to say this in this way, only for brevity's sake. You do agree it's unsustainable at this course. And the fact that people are living so much longer means that you're, you are collecting so much more than you and ever that, made and that's, into it. And that's actually the last topic I, w- okay. I had on our, our, our agenda for today. It's, it's, you know, life expectancy. So, you know, a, a baby uh, girl born in the U.S., you know, right now has a life expectancy at birth of 81.4 years. That's 55 months longer than the life expectancy, which was 76.8 years of an American baby boy born at the same time. So the, the old adage that the average woman will outlive the average man by roughly four plus years, I mean, it doesn't come as any great surprise, but I think what you know we have to think about is the fact that where was life expectancy you know la- a generation ago much you, much less where is li- where is life expectancy going to be a future generation so again it gets back to the drain on the system so something something has to change and if you would give us one minute on student debt because it's also heading Social Security. You, you've well, we, we kind of well, we, we kind of comp- the, the, the yeah, point it, I wanted to trying to make with yeah. the student debt was the fact that yeah. that there is as much people that are debt holders or debt owers as there are as people that are yeah. collecting. You know that, that but Social Security at, benefit. I guess the point I'm trying to make the the Social Security is what you've paid into it, what you earn, how much you collect, how many years you live. Most people are living many more years than they pay in. The student debt, people have co- have amassed debt that in most cases they're not going to be able to afford to pay back. You know, it all gets back to that, that three-legged stool we often talk about. Yeah. And, 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 you know, real estate is obviously a critical part of that. We've seen – in, you know, we, we have seen, you know, increased volume, you know, here locally and global or, or uh, nationally as well. But I think it's something that we always have to be concerned about is, you know, does the home buyer have the, the wherewithal and the ability to make those payments? And a final quick comment. If you did Sally May or now there's direct student loans and NJ or all these different programs, if you did it through one of those federal programs, the debt retires with you. So if you die and you still owe two hundred thousand, then that debt is gone. You, yes, I mean it's then they eat it. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. So look, um, on that, I'm going to I'm going to uh, I'm going to get going. I want to wish you, Harry, your uh, your family, your listeners, a wonderful holiday uh, tomorrow. Chuck. I just find all, I, it's incredible that tomorrow is July it's 4th, July four, and then it's um, going to be Labor Day. And I'll tell you what, it is it is steamy out there. I was oh, outside oh, this morning oh, about five thirty, and I said, "Whoa, like what." Like what happened? I so, know. I know. But it's, it'll break soon. It's all good. So it's and you think about it, this weather is at, is exceptional, you know, for the shore. Chuck, no, no doubt. doubt about it. See you real soon. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you, Harry. All that you said to us, right back to you. We'll be back. Miss New Jersey, 2019 is next in just a few minutes. Health update brought to you by the law offices of Richard A. Stoloff, New Jersey and Pennsylvania. Just last year, it became legal to sell and possess non-explosive fireworks for anyone 16 years and older. These include party poppers and sparklers. And even though they're non-explosive, these fireworks can still be incredibly dangerous. Sparklers, even with wooden handles, can reach temperatures more than 1,000 degrees, so probably not a good idea to give them to our kids. When using fireworks, read all of the instructions, use them outdoors only, and away from any flammable material. Also, be sure your pets are indoors away from the action. While it may be exciting to use fireworks every year there are injuries and emergency visits on the 4th of july your best bet leave it to the professionals who put on a better show than any of us ever could i'm robin stoloff happy 4th of july brought to you by the law offices of richard a stoloff stoloff injury law.com attention you expect results you deserve at seacrest village they understand that families need a break from the daily responsibilities of taking care of a loved one Whether you're going on vacation, want to take care of personal business, 
or just need some quality time with your family, Seacrest Village has the facilities to assist you. In addition to featuring a knowledgeable and caring staff, they have long been the leader in delivering quality, long-term subacute and memory care. So rest assured, you know your family member is in compassionate and skilled hands. It's all part of making your loved one as safe and comfortable as possible. And respite residents receive the same services available to their full-time residents. Seacrest Village in Little Lake Harbor Township. Call for special rates and more information about respite care at 609-296-9292. That's 609-296-9292. Or visit SeacrestVillageNJ.com. It's worth the visit and closer than you think. When it comes to the success of your small business, you make every dollar count. So what could you do with $10? It may not sound like a lot of money, but it's enough to turn 500 strangers into 500 connections. All it takes is the right business card. Go to Vistaprint.com today and you'll get 500 high-quality custom business cards for only $9.99. You heard right, 500 business cards for $9.99. That's less than two cents per card, but don't let the price fool you. Vistaprint uses only carefully selected inks and paper stocks, so your satisfaction is absolutely guaranteed every time for any reason. You'll find dozens of designs that are just right for your business at Vistaprint, and you can add your logo and contact information with just a few clicks. It's never been easier to turn straight strangers into connections. Just visit Vistaprint and start today because this offer won't last forever. Get your 500 business cards for just $9.99 at Vistaprint.com. Use promo code 8787 at checkout. That's Vistaprint.com, promo code 8787. Hi, it's Brian Kilmeade. Join me next at 10, then Sean Hannity at 3. Now back to Harry Hurley on WPG Talk Radio 104.1, South Jersey's talk station. Nine minutes before the top of the hour, I consider this a privilege. My first visit with Jamie Jalaretta, who is the Miss New Jersey 2019 reigning champion. And uh, congratulations. It is so nice to meet you. Thank you so much. It's so good to be here. Are you excited about what's about to unfold? Yes, absolutely. I'm really looking forward to hearing more about Miss America and what I'm going to have to do to prepare for Miss America. When you won and you found out that you would be Miss New Jersey 2019, was that amazing to try to process at the time? I don't think there was much going on in my head. It was just like, oh my goodness, this is the craziest experience ever. But you heard your name, right? I did hear my name. But I didn't really process it all. It all kind of unfolded so quickly. It was a really surreal moment for me. Did they pronounce your name correctly? I couldn't tell you. Okay. I could. They, I think so. I think Karen got, Rogers but, did it right. But they got the right person. Yes. Karen, incidentally, and I know Karen, she, mm-hmm. she's an elegant, lovely person. Mm-hmm. She did a really good job uh, as MC. The experience of winning the Miss New Jersey pageant. Tell our listeners about it. So I... Immediately hugged my first runner up, Kira Seeley. She's beautiful, and I'm honored to have her as my first runner up. And then I just kind of looked out and I wanted to find my family, but I was just so in the moment. I was like trying to process everything. I heard people cheering and clapping. And then after walking the runway, I saw my friends on the stage. And that was an awesome moment to have some of my best friends on that stage with me. Even though we are competitors, they really are some of my closest friends. Because you're going up against excellent competition, you really, to win, You have to do well in all these different aspects, interview and all the other elements within the competition. It's it's really tough to emerge as the winner. Yeah, I always say when people ask me how I prepare for a pageant or for Miss New Jersey, I always say that I just try to live my best life. And as silly as that sounds... It's really what you have to do. I keep up with the news. I practice my mock interviews. I practice public speaking. I go to the gym. I practice my talent. So I really am just living my best life and trying to be the best version of myself. Sometimes people are in many qualifiers and it takes a long time and and many never reach where you've reached is actually becoming one of the contestants for Miss America. What was your path? Did you have to enter a lot of pageants to get to the point that you are or did you have instant success? So I started in the Miss America organization when I was 15 right after my 
or entering my sophomore year of high school in the Outstanding Teen Organization. So I competed as a teen for two years, and then I aged out and immediately went into the Miss program. I kind of just wanted to jump right into it. On a whim, I didn't think that I would even win a local, and then I ended up winning Miss South Jersey my senior year of high school, and then I competed for Miss New Jersey that first year and was, I believe, third runner-up. I was in the top five, which was a really cool experience. I was just happy to be there. I really wanted to make top 10 to perform for my family, and then making top five was really exciting. And then this past year, I won Miss South Shore, and then I won it all, which was awesome. So you did the qualifiers to be eligible to be in Miss New Jersey, Mm -hmm. and then you have to win Miss New Jersey in order to make it to Miss America. Yeah, so you win a local title, and then all the locals compete for the state title, and then all of the states compete for Miss America. I'm not going to get into any of the changes, because I don't think any of that is fair. You didn't have anything to do with any of the changes or anything, but this uh, Miss America 2019 is different elements than your Miss New Jersey, correct? Yes, it will be a different competition. So you have to you have to prepare for that. Yes, and for they the haven't first time ever. Yes, and they haven't really uh, revealed anything to us besides what has been on the news already. So I'm not exactly sure what I have to do. I assume that that inf- information will be coming out soon because we have our Miss America lottery on the ninth. So we kind of have to know what the faces of competition are before we pick them. So it'll be interesting. And Jamie, when you won Miss New Jersey, obviously at some point you realize that you're going to Miss America. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I've processed it yet. It's still kind of an abstract idea to me. I think it'll be more concrete once I go to orientation and once the lottery happens. But it, it's all happening so soon. It's in September, and I feel like, you know, I just won. So it's really exciting. And you're also the only one that has this um, distinction as well, and that's that you're the you're the home town candidate. Yes, yes, absolutely. And I love that because it kind of gives my friends and family no excuse to not go in a sense. So a lot of them are going to Miss America and are going to the parade. So it'll be nice to have that support because I'm the hometown girl. Our WPG listeners are very well aware of this. Ashley, myself, Jennifer, and Heather, and Joe, and Chris, we, we have a whole team that covers live the Miss America Show Us Your Shoes parade mm-hmm. every year. Uh, the president of resorts, Marchi Antonio, has approved us again. We will be there uh, on that incredible evening. And I imagine that is something iconic that you're really looking forward to. Yes, I have a few ideas in my head still of what exactly I want to do for the parade, but I'm very excited for it. My mom's very excited for it. She's always loved doing my parade themes for Miss New Jersey when we have the Show Us Your Shoes parade. So she's looking forward to that. We love it. uh, And I don't speak for our whole team, but Ashley's here. We, We love it because there are just so many things. Some of the contestants go like over the top. And it's it's amazing. Some go understated. It seems that almost all, though, take the care, time, and concern to represent something that's important in their state. Yes, absolutely. So I've been trying to think of things that are distinct to New Jersey. One idea that's kind of rolling through my head right now is that New Jersey is the diner capital of the world, so I might do something with that. But I have a few ideas rolling right now. I was thinking about there's been great success of Miss New Jersey's over a number of years. We're going to be interviewing Suzette Charles in the near future, Mm -hmm. Miss America, of course, first runner up and then became Miss America when Vanessa Williams stepped down. I have to say, just a little aside, I was very happy when Miss America straightened all that out and Vanessa Williams was treated with dignity and respect. Yes, I was at Miss America that year that she came back. It It was really nice. It it was just elegant. It was terrific. And it was just, it was uh, as it should be. It was just terrible what was done there. But uh, obviously last year's uh, Miss New Jersey, Caitlin, who you know, was tremendous and very high ranking. Second runner up. She was awesome. Yeah. And and a, a friend of mine, Jennifer Macris, now mm-hmm. Jennifer Hill, was second runner up about, a, I forget, 14 years before that. Being the hometown girl and following success, how do you feel going in? Well, I definitely have big shoes to fill because Caitlin was second runner up. But really, I'm just focusing on having a good time and making friends. And I really think that what helped me win Miss New Jersey was because I was having so much fun. And I think that's visible to the audience and the judges. So I'm going to go into Miss America with that same mindset, do my best and hopefully leave with no regrets. I love what you just said, Jamie, because my feeling is if you look comfortable, you make other people feel comfortable. Yes. Your energy is contagious. Yes. And then coming along with that, typically success goes along with that as well. Absolutely. Because you're not too uptight. 
uh, tell everybody what your talent is going to be because I'm predicting you're going to get to do your talent. <laughs> awesome. So my talent is dance. I'm doing a contemporary jazz dance to Natural Woman by Aretha Franklin. It's the same dance that I did at Miss New Jersey, and I won a talent preliminary award on that Friday for it. So I'm excited to do it on the Miss America stage. Final minute. So, Jamie, you have this routine nailed, don't you? You have it down. I have it down. I want to make some changes to it, tweak it up a little bit, add some more tricks and fun stuff in it, but it is done. What is... What are you most looking forward to being in the Miss America competition? Definitely meeting all of the other contestants. I don't think very many people can say that they have a friend in every state, so I'm looking forward to that. Jamie Gialoretto, it is a privilege to present you Miss New Jersey 2019 and our champion going into the Miss America competition. Thank you. Notice I haven't said pageant. Yeah, it's competition. A, it's a competition. <laughs> I think I said pageant. Competition. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. On your success. I wish you well. Thank you. And we'll see you at the parade. See you there. Take care. We'll be back. Fourth quarter begins right now. I'm Hurley in the morning. This is WPG. WPGG Atlantic City. WENJ 97.3 HD3 Millville. Everything you need to know in six minutes starts now. He's still conducting supreme job interviews. I'm Dave Anthony, Fox News. Very interesting, though, was my four meetings. We'll be, I'll be meeting with two or three more. President Trump still working off that list of conservatives, which has Democrats worried. Fox's John Decker live at the White House. President Trump is narrowing the list of candidates to replace Justice Anthony Kennedy. White House spokeswoman Sarah Sanders on Fox & Friends said the president has a list of 25 stellar.